This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, Using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is another one filmed in my basement, and I'm playing Zedru, keeping a Needle Verge Pathway, Mountain, Plains, Rainbow Vale, Boro Signet, Irrigated Farmland, and Island. Nick is playing his Radiant, Sarah Archangel, and Siani Eye of the Storm deck, and he keeps an Island, a Plains, Azorius Chancery, Favorable Winds, Render Silent, Imperian Eagle, and Emeria Angel. Max is playing General Ferris Rorik, or Ferrero Roche, whichever you prefer, keeping Velomachus Lorehold, Sunforger, Assemble the Legion, Deflecting Palm, War Room, Plains, and a Mountain. Martin is playing Morphon, keeping an Underground Sea, Polluted Delta, Desolation Giant, Lightning Greaves, Hammerfist Giant, Tundra, and Xenograft. Martin wins the die roll and starts us off. Martin draws, playing an underground sea as the first land of the game, and passes to me. I draw and play my Temple of Epiphany, scrying one and bottoming it before passing to Nick. Nick plays an island. Max plays a Myriad Landscape, which comes in tapped and passes. Martin draws and plays a land, casting Lightning Greaves and passing turn. I draw and play an Irrigated Farmland, which comes in tapped. Nick plays a Plains and casts an Azorius Signet, passing to Max. Max plays a Plains, passing back to Martin. Martin draws and cracks a polluted delta, losing one to go and find a swamp, and then casts an arcane adaptation, naming Giant as it comes in. With nothing else, he ships a turn to me. I draw and play a mountain into a Boro Signet, passing. Nick draws and plays an island. He taps four for a Myria Angel and passes to Max. Max plays a mountain, passing to Martin. Martin draws and plays a Windswept Reef, cracking it and losing one to find a forest. He then casts an Ondu Giant, going to find a mountain. He puts the Greaves to the Giant and passes turn. At the end of turn, Max cracks the Myriad Landscape to go and find two planes. I draw, playing a Rainbow Veil as my land for turn, and then cast Zedru the Great Hearted. Nick casts one of his commanders, Siani Eye of the Storm. Nick swings the Amirga Angel at Martin, dealing three. In his second main phase, he plays an Azorius Chancery, which comes in tapped, and bounces an island back to his hand, plus triggers the Angel's landfall ability, making him a 1-1 bird token. Max draws, and plays a mountain. He casts Assemble the Legion, and passes to Martin. Martin draws, and plays a Xenograph this time, also naming Giant. At the end of his second main phase, I activate the Rainbow Veil, and give it to him at his end step. I draw a card and gain a life on my upkeep from Zedru's trigger, and then draw for turn. I play a Plains as my land for turn, and cast Humble Defector. I then drop Rule of Law and pass to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Temple of Enlightenment to scry one and bottoms it, and also makes a bird token from the Angel. He then casts a Gravitational Shift to pump the team, and swings one bird token at max for three, the Amira Angel at Martin for 5, and Siani at me for 5 as well. Siani's on attack trigger lets him scry 3, and he puts 1 on top and 2 on the bottom, passing turn. Max makes a soldier token from the Assemble the Legion trigger and draws. He plays a War Room and casts General Ferris, passing to Martin. Martin draws, casting Descendant's Path, and passes to me. On my upkeep, with the Zedru trigger on the stack, I activate Humble Defector to draw two, donating the Defector to Max. I then resolve the Zedru trigger, drawing two and gaining two life, and then draw for turn. 
I then play a Shivan Reef as my land drop, and cast Fear of Safety, passing. Nick draws, and plays an island, making another bird token. He then casts his other commander, Radiant Sarah Archangel, as his one spell for turn. He then swings the Angel and Siani at max for 10, and scries 2, keeping 1 on top, and bottoming 1, and passing. Max makes two soldiers on his upkeep to the Assemble trigger, and draws, and activates the Humble Defector. This has him drawing two, and he donates it to Martin. He then casts Velomachus Lorehold, and passes. Martin reveals, and bottoms a Mana Confluence off the Path trigger, drawing for turn. He plays a Volcanic Island, and then casts a Kick Desolation Giant to wipe all other creatures. Martin then equips the Greaves to the Giant, and moves to combat, and swings at Nick, but only deals one because of the gravitational shift. I draw, and play an island for turn, and then cast Arcane Signet. Nick casts a Windstorm Drake, passing to Max. Max makes three soldier tokens, and draws. He then recasts his commander again, and passes to Martin. Martin reveals a Calamity Giant off of the Descendant's Path, which he gets to cast for free. He then plays a Flooded Strand, and equips the Calamity Giant with the Greaves. And then goes to combat. He swings at me, paying the 4, and hitting me for 4. In his second main phase, he cracks the strand, losing 1 to go and find an island, and passes. I draw, play out a Needle Verge Pathway, and then cast Oath of Lieges, passing a Nick. Nick gets his Oath of Lieges trigger on his upkeep to find a Plains, and draws for turn. He then plays a Sacred Mesa, and passes to Max. Before moving to Nick's end step, Max activates the War Room to draw a card and lose two life, and donates the Rainbow Bale back to me. He then makes four more Soldier Tokens as we move to his turn, and he draws a card. He then casts the Sunforger and equips it to General Ferris, before passing to Martin. Martin triggers the Oath of Lieges, and gets to go and find an island in his upkeep, and then flips a Sun Titan off the Descendant's Path, which he gets to cast for free. With the Sun Titan entering, he grabs a Flooded Strand from the Graveyard, and in his main phase, moves the Lightning Greaves onto it. He then moves to combat, swinging the Sun Titan at me, bringing back the Polluted Delta, and deals 8. He then cracks both of the fetches, losing 2 and getting to go and find 2 more lands, and passes. I get an Island off the Oath trigger, and draw for turn. I cast a Bucknard's Everfull Purse, and activate it, rolling a 3 on the d4 to get 3 treasure tokens, and pass the purse to Martin before ending my turn. On my end step, Nick makes 2 Pegasus's Pegasi off the Sacred Mesa, and moves to his turn, getting the Oath of Lieges trigger to find an island, and then sacrifices a Pegasus, and drawing for turn. In his main phase, Nick then casts an Empyrean Eagle, and moving to combat, swings the Drake at max, dealing 6. At the end of turn, Max activates Sunforger to go and grab Generous Gift, blowing up my Rule of Law and giving me a 3-3 Elephant. He then moves to his turn, getting to go and find a Plains from the Oath of Lieges, and making 5 Soldier Tokens and drawing. Max then casts a Land Tax, before following up with Bruce Tarl, and this makes him a 4-4 Golem Token from Ferris, and he equips the Sunforger back onto his commander. He then swings his commander at Nick as a 5-1 with Double Strike and Lifelink, thanks to Bruce Tarl's Enter the Battlefield trigger. Nick chumps this with a Bird token, though, but Max still gains 5, and then passes turn. Martin flips a Giant Harbinger off the Descendant's Path, casting it, and getting a tutor for a Thundercloud Shaman to put to top, which he draws for turn. He then casts it, dealing 10 to each creature. Max responds to this by casting a Boros Charm to give his board indestructible. Martin follows up once that's all done, with a Kinder Discovery, naming Giants, and then moves to combat. He swings the Sun Titan and Desolation Giant at Nick, with the Titan bringing back the Flooded Strand. Before blocks, Nick makes two Pegasi, which are three ones thanks to the Gravitational Shift, to trade with the Sun Titan, and takes two from the Desolation Giant. Martin gets to draw two cards from the Discovery, and once he's out of combat, moves the Greaves to the Calamity Bearer, before playing an Ancient Tomb, and cracking the Flooded Strand, losing one, to go and find a Plains. Before passing turn though, Martin activates the Purse, rolling a 4 on the d4. He makes 4 treasures, and moves the Greaves over onto the Thundercloud Shaman. 
He then uses the treasures and takes two from the ancient tomb to cast Moretti of the Frost, copying the Calamity Bearer and drawing a card off the Discovery as a giant comes in. With nothing else, he moves the griefs to Moretti and passes to me. I trigger Oath of the Legion on my upkeep and grab a Plains before drawing for turn. I cast a Mana Vault and then a Windfall to make everyone discard their hands and draw the largest hand, which is five. I then tap the Mana Vault and a bunch of other mana to cast Enchanted Evening and then an Enlightened Tutor, going to find a Fires of Invention to put on top. I then cast a Frantic Search, drawing two and discarding two lands, and then untapping three lands. I then cast Faithless Looting and use the Rainbow Veil to do it and donate it to Martin. Nick gets his Oath Trigger, going to find a Plains, and sacrifices a Pegasus to the Sacred Mesa and draws for turn. He casts Kanji Sky Warden, passing to Max. Max gets his Oath Trigger and gets a Mountain before making six Soldier Tokens from the Assembled Legion and drawing for turn. He plays a Plains for turn and rolls the Everfill Purse, hitting a 4 and donating it to Nick. Max then activates the Sunforger, grabbing Return to Dust, exiling Gravitational Shift and Sphere of Safety. He then casts a Reconstruct History, bringing back Archaeomancer's Map, Response Resurgence, and Return to Dust. Max casts Return to Dust once more, hitting the Calamity Bearer and Kindred Discovery. He then casts the Resurgence half of the Split card and gets another Golem token since he got one from the Reconstruct History and gets an extra combat step and gives his team First Strike and Vigilance. He swings 18 soldiers at me, one Golem at Martin, and another Golem, Ferris, and Bruce at Nick, with Bruce Charles on attack trigger, giving the Golem going at Martin Double Strike and Lifelink. I take 18, while Martin chumps with the Giant Harbinger, gaining max 4 off the Lifelink, but still takes 6, some of which is from Ferris. Moving to a second combat step, Max swings both golems at me, giving the other golem double strike with Bruce, Ferris and Bruce at Nick again, and the 18 soldiers at Martin. Unfortunately, I die, and Nick takes 6, and Martin blocks 2 soldiers. Max gains 8 more from lifelink, and passes, discarding down the hand size. Martin puts a shared animosity to the bottom with Descendant's Path, and draws. He uses the Ancient Tomb, taking 2, and his treasures to cast an austere command, picking the modes of destroying small creatures and artifacts. He then moves to combat and swings the team at Max, who chumps Moretti and takes 14. Martin then casts a Palisade Giant for some defense, and follows up with a Farseek and passes to Nick. Nick sacrifices a Pegasus, untaps, and draws. He plays a Plains and casts Reconnaissance Mission, and then swings his team at max for 11. He draws 3, and in the second main phase, casts Muldrifter, drawing 2 more, and passing. Max makes 7 soldier tokens on his upkeep, and draws. He recasts Ferris again, and then Oskir the Reconstructor, making a Golem token from his commander's trigger. Forced to stay on defense though, he passes turn. Martin puts a land to the bottom with the Descendant's Path, and draws. He casts Morphon, naming Giants as it comes in, into a Mirror Entity and a Quakebringer, but takes two from tapping the Ancient Tomb to help pay for them. Nick sacrifices a Pegasus, and draws. Nick then moves to combat, swinging his flyers at Max in the air, dropping him down to two. He draws four cards from the Reconnaissance mission. Nick then casts Descend upon the Sinful, which Martin responds to by activating Mirror Entity for zero. Unfortunately though, Martin's creatures would still be exiled because Morphon gives him plus one plus one, but we don't catch this. Nick then makes a 4-4 Angel token off of Delirium, and then follows up by casting Imperial Storm to make three more. He plays a Tap Path of Ancestry and passes to Max. Max makes eight Soldier tokens and draws, and then goes to combat. He swings all out at Nick, and Nick blocks and kills four, but still takes four. Max then casts Rise of the Hobgoblins, where X is equal to seven, to make seven goblin tokens. He then passes turn. Martin flips a Grave Titan off the Descendant's Path, which he has to ship to the bottom. He then draws, and casts a Smothering Tithe, and follows up with a Borderland Behemoth, passing. 
Nick sacrifices the sacred mace on his upkeep and draws, giving Martin a treasure. He casts Safara Sky's Blade and sends all the angel tokens at Max. Max Chaos Warps to Safara, which has Nick shuffling it in and revealing a Steel Plume Marshal, and Max then dies from the hit. Nick then draws four, and Martin gets to make four treasure tokens from the Tithe Triggers. And once that's done, casts a Hanged Executioner, making a Spirit Token, and then discarding down a hand size and passing to Martin. Martin flips Agar the Freezing Flame off Descendant's Path and casts it for free before drawing for turn. He then recasts Morophon and follows up with a Galecaster Colossus. He swings the Borderland Behemoth at Nick, who exiles it with the Hanged Executioner, and Martin passes. Nick draws and pays for the Tithe, then swings everything at Martin, who dies in combat. Game review time. So Martin's Morophon deck was Giant Tribal, and we actually got to see quite a bit of it in action. I was surprised he didn't bring his commander out earlier to help reduce the cost of some of his big giants, but he didn't seem to need to. I think the Descendant's Path really helped him along, since he was getting a free giant every second turn it seemed like. In case you're wondering, this was Nick's budget deck, and my goodness did it trounce us. That gravitational shift was just so hard to answer, and apparently when all of your creatures have evasion, it can be very hard to stop. I think that's the longest I've ever seen an assembled legion sit on the field, and Max gained a ton of hasty soldier tokens. There were a few turns where he probably could have gotten in without losing too many of them, but I think he wanted to save them up for an alpha strike. I did like that he waited until I'd played the Enchanted Evening, and then used Return to Dust very effectively by exiling creatures as well as enchantments and artifacts, since everything was an enchantment thanks to my enchantment. For my Zedri deck, I've been pretty happy with the results that I've been putting in, and although I haven't gotten super close to winning, I have been able to use her ability a lot better than I was before. There's been a real influx of cards that donate themselves away, which has really helped the deck gain traction, and has made it much cheaper to be able to draw a bunch of cards on my upkeep with Zedru's trigger. I've also got to add new cards like Fires of Invention, which I'm really excited to try out. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.